Hey builders, so today we're going to go through the installation of the 10 button board uh, that we're going to be offering for the Kyber control system. Uh, so this board can be installed in any remote uh, system out there that will work with the Kyber, which should be any uh, remote uh, transmitter and receiver that uses SBUS. Um, the remote I'm going to modify today is the QX7. Uh, and what I plan on doing is adding 10 buttons to this remote. Uh, there will be eight buttons on the back. There will be four on each side. And then I'm going to do a two additional buttons here. Uh, and with that, I'm going to have to move these two switches so that we can keep those in play. Uh, we'll end up moving those probably in, at these locations here, but we'll decide uh, that location once we move in. Uh, we are going to do away with this pot so it may be that I put one of the switches there so we'll uh, look at that once we open it up and see where we want to place the switches. Um, the tools you'll need for this of course are the uh, the board that you will get from us. Uh, it'll come attached with the leads here um, and then you'll need wire uh, to modify the remote. I'm using um, this is 30 uh, gauge wire. It's silicon coated. Um, always try to use silicon coated in, in your robots instead of in your droids if you can. It's a little bit safer to use. It's uh, less susceptible to heat uh, so that if anything does overheat, your wire is not going to melt and catch on fire. Um, I'm using these switches here um, or buttons. So they're just uh, momentary switches. Do, do not use the ones that are latching. These are non-latching momentary. Um, just off of Amazon, I'll try to post a link on those. Uh, and I chose those because they actually have a depth uh, that doesn't exceed. Once I install them here and tighten them down, you don't run into any of the boards uh, or controls on the inside of these remotes. Uh, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I use a set of uh, wire clippers and then an uh, X-Acto knife, soldering iron, solder, and then a drill with, uh, this is a 9 30 seconds uh, drill here, drill bit here, I think. Yes. And I think that's it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start the installation. What I'll do is go through these. Uh, I'll do one example and then we'll fast forward through all of the others and then we'll come back and do more detailed installation once we get there. So, We'll start off by removing the back panel on uh, the QX7. Uh, and the reason I chose the size of this board was so that it could actually fit comfortably inside here and still leave the programming port intact. Uh, so once everything is wired up, this will just be right inside here, uh, out of the way, not having to be stored inside the remote somewhere. Uh, and we'll take the battery panel off. If you do have a battery connected, make sure you disconnect that. And then lay all of that aside. And I'm just using, this is what came with this particular remote, so it makes it a little bit easier instead of having to rest on the sticks. Uh, so just use that to place your remote in and hold it still. Uh, for this particular remote, we'll take, there's four bad uh, screws on the back side. Again, like most uh, things out there, once you open this up and start modifying it, uh, you do void the warranty on your remote. So do this at your own risk. So we'll remove the four screws. As we modify other remotes, uh, and hopefully as other people modify remotes, um, we'll get more videos out there of doing additional ones, so keep a watch out for those. This is you can just take put your screws in there so you don't lose them later. 
Okay, that's the inside of the remote. So we can see more than likely we can get, we probably will put one of the switches here and just take out the potentiometer. If it's not uh, too tall, I may put it under here. If it's too tall, uh, then I'll end up mounting probably one right here at this and then one here. And if we can't get them mounted there, then we'll just uh, disconnect those and do away with those two switches. Okay. All right, so now we'll go to the installation of the buttons. So on this one, I've done a few of these already, and what I've done is just place them. Uh, it's pretty evenly spaced. If we put one here, one here, one here, and one here, uh, then that gives you a, a good placement for your fingers uh, whenever you're holding the remote on the front. You can see the cavity that you have here. Uh, so once we get one installed, I'll show you how it looks on the inside. We'll take the drill, get it centered in that zone there. And then take your exacto. Cut that rubber section out. Okay, so that gets that hole drilled. So I'm going to take one of these switches, and you're going to bend the, the leads over. You just bend those over. Normally, they're straight when you get them. Just bend them over at a 90 degree. Make sure the nut is off. Stick it in the hole. Tighten that up so that gets your switch installed there. You can see that it's just, it's going to be below the surface that was originally there. So then uh, whenever you're modifying other remotes, just make sure that uh, whatever switch you select is going to be um, where it does not interfere uh, with anything that may be on the inside of the remote. So as we put this one back on, you can see there are no collisions and you can't feel anything there um, on that part. All right, so we'll do that for the additional uh, eight locations on the back of the remote. So I'll install another one here, 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 and there. One, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. Uh, then after we do that, I'll, I'll remove these two switches and look at their locations uh, and see what we can do there. Uh, once I get that done, we'll be back and we'll show how to wire everything up. See you in a bit. Okay, now we're back with the eight buttons installed on the back of the remote. Uh, as you can see here, we've got all eight installed. So now you get... Nice placement on all four fingers. Nice and easy to find. You can rest your fingers in between them. If you don't need to, reach up and hit whichever one you need. Um, that's the inside. You can see I've got all of those bent over. Make sure to twist them just exactly right so your OCD is okay with it. All right, so we've got that part done. I went ahead and looked at installing the button on the front. 
Uh, so we've got this one installed here. Uh, we're going to go through and show how what I did uh, to get that installed and get this switch moved over. Okay. So the first thing I did is remove the long pole switch here just to get it out of the way. Well, let's don't do the side we've already done. Put that one back. We'll go to this side. This configuration is really tight in this remote, so it does take a little bit of finagling. This is the one we're wanting to move. So we'll go ahead. Take that one out. Okay. So once we do that, we'll want to start with the 964 bit. Because we want to enlarge this hole. Extremely careful doing this so that you don't go through and damage any other electronics. And then I went ahead and pre-wired this switch um, so that once it's in, we don't have to wire it up. Um, so we'll go ahead and install that. Find its net. Install it on the front. So then we'll swap drill bits. And this is a 1564. We want this to be more toward the top. And then you can leave uh, the black sleeve on there. Keeps it from protruding as far. Pop that in. And then go ahead and add the other one back in before you tighten that one up. So you can get it reinstall the holder for this one. Okay. 
So now that gets all of your switches installed. Everything is still functional on both sides. And now when you're using a stick, you can easily reach up and hit that button. This is just all user preference. Um, so, I mean, you could have the switches here if you wanted to. Instead of putting them here, there's possibility to put one here. Uh, you could move a button to here, uh, which is a little bit more difficult to do because they're using a low profile pot there. So, it may not be possible to move it there. Okay, and then we'll take, we want to run these wires so that and meet these others. Okay. So those will all go out. And the reason for doing that is that we could install a plug here, uh, which gets a little bit more difficult to do. But you want it to be where you can easily get to uh, to open these up so that when you connect it to the board um, you have this amount of uh, play in your wiring to be able to bring it back around and lay this out if you ever need to work on it again. Alright, so that gets those two switches. And then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and wire in all of these switches and get them ready to attach to the board. Determine a link that would be comfortable for those. Cut you to it. Another thing I like about silicon wire, you can basically use your fingernails to trim the coating back. I'm going to take and tin these wires. And your switch. Hmm. Get around this way. So those will go to your board, which will be going out there. So we'll stick those in there. Uh, depending on how many colors of wire you have, uh, you may want to go ahead and uh, tape these two together with a piece of tape so you know they go to the same switch. Uh, as far as switch numbering, don't worry about that. Uh, you can adjust that in the software uh, once you get all of them installed onto the board. Um, we'll go through programming of the board after that. Okay, I'll go ahead and get the rest of these eight hooked up and then we'll get uh, the remote buttoned up and then we'll look at installing onto the board. Okay, see you in a bit. So now we have all of the switches wired. I uh, have all eight switches wired here. What I did is I had enough colors to put blue, white, yellow, and green on each side. So then I ran those into uh, the locations here. I also ran uh, the yellow and the green that we previously installed on the buttons on the front of the remote uh, through this hole here. Uh, I did go ahead and tape those wires together so that I know which ones those belong to. So now we'll take and fold this over and put it on to the remote. Around, make it more convenient and we can see the spaghetti we have on this side 
So I did add uh, a set of helping hands here. Uh, these were just one from Amazon. I really like that it has a weighted base. These things can move around uh, almost anywhere to get you uh, into placement for your soldering. So I'll get this kind of low so that we'll have a huge amount of wires left over once we're done. And we'll pick two of the colors. Strip those back. Go ahead and tan those. And then on the board, you'll see that it's marked S1 through S10. So that represents each switch that you have installed uh, on your uh, remote. So then we will tent. push that through. We'll solder them one at a time because that seems to be easier. And you can take and push that wire once it's got solder on it. And it's sitting nice and flush on the back side. And then we'll put its corresponding wire through. Same switch one. Again, it doesn't matter which one you put through. Uh, into which position because we will be adjusting that in the software. Okay. So that installs switch one. So then we'll go through and do that for all uh, of the other nine switches for a total of 10 on all 10 locations. And then we'll continue the install from there. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so now we're back again and we have all of the wires uh, soldered to the board. You can see that uh, the five switches we had pushed in on this side or wired to S1 through S5. Same for S6 through S10. Uh, and you can see all of that will fit nicely in there. Plenty of other ways we could do this. We could pre-solder this board, uh, mount this board in, and then run it to all of the switches. So uh, a lot of different options that we could use there. Uh, let's remove that out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead. So this is the, the three signal wires uh, from the board. So we'll go ahead and run those through the same side uh, that we have the other Wires going to the main remote. We'll give those about the same wire distance. Uh, and then we can go ahead and take those in position with the others. And then at this point, um, could tape these all together, make it a little easier to manage. Nice little bundle. Okay, now we'll determine which switch we want. Uh, on this particular remote, this one has a catch in the center so that you can easily center it. Uh, this one has full range of motion without a catch in the center. So I want to keep this for the volume control that we'll have on the Kyber uh, control system. So I want to uh, wire this board into this potentiometer. So if we look, that goes to these three wires. So we'll 
clip those three wires and just tuck those back in if you're going to leave that uh, switch in there. And then what we're going to do is wire these three wires into this. Uh, the negative will go to the black, positive will go to the red, and then the signal is the yellow. Uh, so I'll get those wired in. As you wire those in, uh, you want to make sure to use some shrink wrap. Uh, and once I get that done, I'll show you how that looks. All right, so we'll take a little break and we'll be right back after I finish that. See you in a bit. All right, so we finished up the wiring from the board to the remote. Uh, as you can see, I have the uh, wires we cut earlier for the potentiometer. Uh, they are ran to the board. Again, it's negative to negative, positive to positive, and signal to signal. Uh, and then we'll just tuck those in nice and neat. And then this comes around. Those get tucked in. should snap together nice and neatly. So then we will reinstall the four screws. Need to invest in an electric screwdriver. Okay. Be able to tuck that in. testing. Alright, so we'll power on the transmitter. And then we'll go into Every remote's going to be a little bit of, a little bit different, but we'll go into the inputs menu. And in the software, you can choose which channel you want. Uh, by default, it's channel 10. Uh, you can name this buttons. Uh, we'll just do capital B for now. And then we'll pick the source and we'll just click a couple of the buttons and you can see that's popping up on S2 which is what we want we'll select that we'll go back out we will page over to the mixes we'll just select ch channel 10 and, and we'll go to the outputs We'll go to channel 10 and you can see that we get a different value 
for every button we push. So that's a successful install. Uh, so then there'll be an additional video later on talking about the software and how we program things in there. All right, that's it for modding the controller. So you can see we've got the two switches here and then we have the eight uh, buttons on the back side. Okay, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.